crossed over into the beginning of the recording. <laughs> I heard you put it on the show the other day, actually. Did you? You put on you put on the beginning because you screwed up and I yelled That's it. That's right. So two habits I'm now in, one good and one bad. Okay. And one involves the death of our child, so this is important. One of them. When I took uh, your new car, your new car, your new Mitsubishi. M- Mitsubishi. How can you say the word Mitsubishi? I don't know. Mitsubishi okay. Zero is is um it's one of these cars. It's a new car, so it's one of these cars where you don't put the key in. You just hold the thing on you and press the button. And so it's taken me out of all the usual things I do when I usually start a car. So, so I've I, it, it's just thrown me off. It reminded me of when I lost my mind taking my diver's test and I my mask went flying off and I, and I went crazy and almost killed everybody. <laughs> no, it does. So this is where it's going on now. Is since your car doesn't do car stuff, I have to just press buttons instead of turn keys and stuff. I'm forgetting my my training, my muscle memory in the car, so I keep forgetting to put it in park. I'm stopped, and I press the off button, and then I go. Well, here's the problem. Is the other day, little, unbeknownst to me, the other day I dropped him off. I'm dropping him. I didn't drop him off. I took him to Boy Cub Scouts. Are you listening to this? Yes, I am. Okay. I took him to. Trish says her chest is constricting because you let in with saying this was about the death of our child, and oh, she's no. horrified. <laughs> okay, so we would have I'm this tra- would be an odd tone to strike if we, if a child had just died. Right. We don't take a lot of shows off. No. I think we're <sighs> taking zero shows off since right. we announced a set schedule for the show. But yeah, I think we'd probably take one off for that. Yeah, and so, so, so anyway, so I throw the thing. I I stop the car at the church parking lot. Anson gets out of the car door behind me. I start getting out, and the car starts rolling backwards. Oh, my goodness. car starts rolling backwards. So it had it continued to roll, it would have clipped him. So I, like, reach over and hit, throw it in park, and it stops. And he's like, you almost killed me. And I'm like, you don't say anything to your mother. So, <laughs> but, uh, so, see, and I've been doing this. And uh, I didn't know, by the way, that your car is so happy to roll back when it's in drive. That sucks. Things a jerk. And then just today, when I went to get you your sparkling seltzers, your spike seltzers. No. Um, which I didn't go find you in the house and hand directly to you like you do to me when you have to go to the packy just to drill the point in. <laughs> Here's your precious, precious booze. That's not what happened. Um, so anyway, so, the, so, so today at the packy, same thing. I forgot to throw it into, into a uh, park. I just pressed the off button, which your car has to have. And I start leaving, and it starts rolling towards the fence. I'm like, oh my goodness! Just put the car in park. I understand, but also, how about this? How about how about this, Mitsubishi? How about don't make the car so rollable when I'm in it? Okay, I wonder if there's something that you can do there. Um, okay, so that's the bad habit I've gotten into. The good habit is, and we benefited from this, and so have our listeners. Okay. And hi, everybody. Good habit is. I now shut down my computer every time after I use it, rather than hit restart. Mm. And so it's it starts fresh every time. And after a night and day, night and day difference, which is That's lovely. Good. Especially when you're dealing with a Mac, because unlike a stupid PC, which your piece <laughs> of crap is, which I is like just a, overly just burdened. It, PC is mostly HVAC unit, <laughs> and then a little bit computing. Unlike unlike your HVAC unit, um, um. Which is happy to shut down because it doesn't want to be uh, uh, running. It, PCs don't want to be running. They want to be asleep. They, they hate it. They're exhausted. They know that they're underperforming. They're not in good shape. Um, so so t- restarting a Mac is tough because it's, it really doesn't trust you. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? You know, this is running too. Maybe you shouldn't. You know, we don't really need to shut down. We're not a PC. Just saying. So there, I'll let you read for a while. What? Uh, I'm not reading, oh. Tom. I'm troubleshooting something. What's okay? happening? Do you mind? What's happening? And you yelled at me. What's happening? No, I just um. No, I have somebody who's having trouble getting in, and I'm not sure why. So I'm oh. trying to figure that out. Oh, how does it work? Get in? Is this Streamyard? No, this is Crowdcast. Can I get in? And uh, you have to be a Barn Barrel Brigadier or above on. Um, Send me the link. Let Barren me see Barrel. if I can get in. It's like on to, our Twitter. I don't know what I'd like you want to me to do. Try okay. our user experience. Well, I don't know. Um. Burn barrel. 
Oh, I should be tweeting something so everybody knows. I tweeted it from the Burn Barrel Twitter, so you can retweet that. I will do that right now, Alice, my dear. And I am sorry that you felt the need to yell at me and snap at me. I'm not, but I would like to be able to get our listener in who upped his membership to $10 a month. Okay, I'm hitting Crowdcast right now. Here we go. This should be crazy in a second. I'm going to hear, see, I'm going to watch me watching me. Live stream exclusively for patrons 10 month a month and join in above. Join us. So I'm going to say, let me in. Sign in with Patreon. Yeah, it'll make you sign in with your Patreon. All right. Crowdcast would like to. I'm going to allow all this stuff. It should probably screw us up. All right. Connecting with Patreon, it says. Oh. You're live and attendees. Can I can see me now. You can see you. Wow, I'm look in. at you. You're in, too. Now oh, we're this is both great. In. Oh, my God. I look fat. <laughs> God damn it, Alice. You didn't tell me I got this fat again. You're fat, honey. Is that what you need to do? <laughs> Shut down the stream until I lose 100 Okay. Pounds. Somebody else said that it was a bit of a process getting in. So... John says, my car lets me turn the key off when it's in gear. Makes a funny sound when that happens. I hope I'm not killing the transmission. Yeah, it's probably not good. Trish says, I'm a macker. TS is a little bit right. No, I'm, a, I'm correct totally about this. I found it pretty easy to get in by going to Patreon. Okay, okay. Um, is Russ is getting the one, two, HR heads up was great. I agree. It was nice to get the notification. Oh, that's cool. Look at this. Look how cool this looks. God, it looked like a fat. Okay, I'm out of here. I don't want to look at myself. Now I'm out of everybody. Okay, I'm sorry about everybody that. Everybody say that I'm not fat, please. All right, so a couple things I want to get to. Um, we'll start with what Biden said in Poland a couple of days ago. And and I've got... Um, anyway, let's just we'll just play it. So the, the media is telling us that this was while the Republicans are back in Washington, D.C., at doing Q&A's bidding in the Senate Judiciary Com Committee... We're told that Biden has really hit his Churchillian moment. I, I listened to four Sunday shows today. It was pretty much the same, the consensus. Absolutely Churchillian. What he's done, We let's not forget this moment, what he's done, and what he's done with NATO, and the consolidation of interest in all these countries, and what they've done, what they've done, what they've done, and what they've done. This is, I have never, well, I might as well throw a, a, a ticker tape parade. It, the, you, they are so proud of what they, look what we've done. Oh, and oh, you know what the thing was? Biden said a few days ago, I sat down on the G and 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 and, and they said America is back. It's like, no, no, America. This isn't. The socialists have somebody they like more in the White House. There's not a matter of America being back. In fact, America is less back. Right. Than it used to be. Right, and I don't understand what they're saying. We did. We united NATO right away. Like, what? I don't get what we did though. Supposedly, like we gave Ukraine stuff. Is that everything we did? No, uh, no. The idea that we're having this coalitional um, discussion and and messaging together, etc. But like, what did we do? Right, we, we just messaged together. Can we? Can while we're we uh, all tweeted hashtags while stand we're with Ukraine? Right, exactly. America is back because you know why, else? Because you know why we know we're back. Why are we back? Because we said America's back. Oh, oh and then good. the people in the Sunday enough. shows said we should really think about this moment. America really is back. If that's a way of feeling good about going from what you saw as chaotic as an existential disaster in the White House, well, then, fine, you can say that, to rebrand this new existence as America being back. America is not back. America wasn't back in um, when we could have preempted all of this stuff. America wasn't back when we put Russians in an extremely advantageous position to be able to be the energy provider for the world rather than us. You know, America mm -hmm. wasn't back um, in Afghanistan when we put on display um, our lack of resolve and the kind of decision making that happens out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I don't want to hear America is back. The Russians are leveling historic, old, beautiful cities and targeting civilians. America's back because we went to a, I mean, how uh, Chamberlain is this? Because we went to a big conference there and Biden shouted at Putin said, one darn inch over the line in a NATO country, and you'll see 
Ooh, my goodness. Oh, what Keep, a... Go right ahead. Keep killing people well, over there. And Trish says on, on the chat, I'm so sick of the Marxist gaslighting. It's so true. It's such gaslighting for them to turn around and then go, oh, well, Trump really caused this. Like, Putin's scared now, but this was all Trump's doing. His policy oh. caused this. Like, as though we didn't all watch Trump be president for four years with no. Ukraine not being invaded by Putin. Well, right. It's You know, I was thinking about it today, Alice. I was looking for window panes, which are not sold in the United States <laughs> at any goddamn shop that's supposed to be selling stuff. Home Depot and Lowe's don't have window panes. So I drove across the world to find window panes. They don't have them. But anyway, I, had, I was thinking about this while I was looking for window panes. Um, is that... There's now not whataboutism. There's like um, phantom whataboutism. So now Biden is doing better dealing with Ukraine than the hypothetical Trump administration that is um, operating in a parallel universe right now. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't really do whataboutism with Trump because Trump didn't have this problem. So they're creating a fake Trump second term in which he's doing terribly. <clears throat> In Ukraine. Right. And he's screwing it all up. You see? Right. You just imagine, imagine. But now, since it's not Trump, America is back. America is back. The Russian tanks are in Ukraine. They're shelling and leveling Ukrainian cities, which they weren't doing with Trump. But then we weren't back, but the Ukrainians could live in peace. Right. I just want to make sure. That's what, but, but we're back now. Um, and also, this, this, you can't rant and roll like he was and and saying oh yeah in one damn uh foot over one inch over or, or a nato country one inch over a nato country it's great it's great to be a tough guy with the situation that's not occurring mm -hmm. my god we're strong when it comes to nato countries you hear what he said it's great to be a tough guy then but that's not the test the test is ukraine and Ukraine, the Russians are several several inches into Ukraine. <clears throat> so where's the tough guy there? And also, one more thing. Uh, I'm going to let you inter interact for a moment. You were frozen, that's all. I was? Yeah. Why am I being frozen? Did, you, re just... did you restart your computer? Uh, no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You've got a PC, Alice. You need to. It's like having a two-cylinder car and a long-distance ride. We can't. you got to get... You gotta restart. I don't know why you freeze. Well, I can't restart now. It's too late. Great. As, um, as long as I'm, uh, hopefully, uh, my many chins are showing while well, I'm frozen. <laughs> so, here's the other thing. For Biden to say one inch over a Ukrainian company, he didn't invent that. That's the NATO, I mean, over the NATO line. That's the NATO <laughs> charter. He didn't invent that. Right. It's not like, like, it's not like a new what? policy. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, why don't you tell them if they, if they come into the American homeland by one inch? Yeah, we know that they're not. <clears throat> it's just horse crap. But so here's the here's the end of the Churchillian speech, which really the only I do kind of like that this happened because it did put people. They wanted to say Churchillian. <clears throat> and you realize that they get advances of this speech, everybody in the media. Right. To and, read. And yeah. it, yep. And so everybody's already got their talking points ready for the Sunday shows. They've already written their reviews of the speech. Just talk about who's, how Churchillian it is. They just have to, uh, you know, tack on a, a uh, flourish or two, and they can file and then go out with their friends to the D.C. bars and get smashed. Or they're in Poland now, you know, wherever. <clears throat> I'm sure there's plenty of opportunity. So here's what he tags on at the end that throws everybody's speeches off. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principle, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. There that goes. God bless you all, and may God defend our freedom, and may God protect our troops. Thank you for your patience. For sake, this man cannot remain in power. So there's the ad lib. Right. Which, which stands on its own. For God's sakes, this man cannot remain in power. So now, when I heard that he had said this, <clears throat> a couple things went in through my mind. Mm -hmm. One was... That is ballsy. That is a bold thing to say. Right. Uh, and that is a step forward. If you're going to say that this can't, man can't remain in power, you're saying that he has no credibility to negotiate with, that we can't recognize him, we can't work with him. It's also going to, of course, 
feed into you know Russian propaganda, which the Republicans like to do so much. Of course, which is sh so Putin can play this and say, "See, they're trying to remove me. The people you elected me. The Americans think that you can go around the world and remove people like me. They get to decide who's the president of you, Russians. You see, mm -hmm. and so it's a, like well, it also uh, well, justifies all of Putin's uh, initial." Uh, pretext for oh, going yes. to war too is like see we had to go into war we had to invade ukraine because they keep these nato people keep encroaching over to our territory and they're trying to mess with our country they're trying to ch to change the regime in our country so obviously we had to go to war this is a defensive war it completely vindicates putin and and makes him look like a good guy there if we go around saying stuff like that it's totally inappropriate i mean i there's a difference, right? Like a lot of people think that Putin shouldn't be in power in Russia, a lot of Russians included, right? Um, because he's not a good dude. But when you're the president of the United States and you're going and giving your big foreign policy speech in Europe about Russia's actions, you can't say that because what the things that you say telegraph American policy and American actions as the most powerful country in the world. So the problem is, too, that, you know, like Trump obviously did a lot of stuff like that, just mm -hmm. said stuff, just did stuff mm -hmm. that wasn't thought out Absolutely. and like carefully part of our policy. But, you know, that's what the left told us for years was so terribly dangerous about Trump. And it turns mm. out Biden's just as bad. He's the same thing. So as always, we have the same problem where, you know, Biden is doing the thing that the left told us that Trump shouldn't be doing for years and years and years. And it goes up to it's not just like idiots on Twitter saying this stuff. It's uh, what's that guy's name? Tom Nichols, who's mm -hmm. Mr. Like foreign policy expert who wrote the book on expert Trump who, derangement syndrome guy, but Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's not he, I don't dislike him that much out of mm -hmm. all the never Trump people. He's not as psychotic as like Rick Wilson or Steve well. Schmidt. <clears throat> He's not. I guess not. I'm, I'm sure he's applied to work with him. <laughs> he did. He worked for the Lincoln did Project he? for a of while. Course, of course. But he got out before the, before everything really got bad. But anyway, he writes for The Atlantic now. And he wrote a whole thing about like criticizing Biden for this, basically. But also sort of making an excuse for it. And he was saying it was irresponsible for CNN to be using that quote as their Chiron, you know, after mm -hmm. the White House had tried to walk it back and everything. So he says, Biden broke his long streak of message <clears throat> discipline during a speech in Poland today when he added an apparently unscripted ending. Wait, wait, what's that lead? Uh, the lead. Biden broke his what? Long streak of message discipline. Oh, oh, right. This is that, entitled that Biden's streak. comments about Putin were an unforced right. error. Um, and that he starts the article by talking about what a great job Biden's done on Ukraine and not gotten us into World War III so far, which you would think would be – that's like a pretty low bar, I yeah, feel. I would say so. <laughs> but anyway, uh, when he added an apparently unscripted ending, for God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. The sound that could not be captured by the cameras after Biden spoke was the dozens of staffers slapping the palms of their hands against their forehead. Predictably, media in America and elsewhere seized on this statement as if it were some new policy. Wait, this is Tom Nichols? Yeah. What an a-hole. Seized on it? Yeah, the media It's the only newsy on thing he said. Mm -hmm. Seized on it. Jesus, we just said that he wants regime change. He just said that he, he can't that remain in power. Yeah. Seized on it. What a dickhead. Don't read any more of that. The guy no, I'm no, not done. I'm not done. Uh, predictably, they seized on it as if it were some new policy or a NATO war aim and asked if the president of the United States was calling for regime change in, of all places, Moscow. Biden's staff lamely offered that the president was saying that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region. He was we'll not, get to that in a moment. So what is Tom Nichols going to say that I need to hear, Alice? Um, what he's going to say is uh, what Biden was doing, of course, was being Joe Biden. He was speaking for all of us from the heart. One of the more endearing things about the president, at least for those of us who admire him, is that he has almost no inner monologue and regularly engages in the kind of gaffe where a politician says something that is impolitic. Oh, my God. But you true. Send, can you send this to me? I Tom Nichols to is a moron. I had no idea. You need to unfollow him on Twitter, too. <laughs> what a moron. 
What a moron. <clears throat> uh, and then he goes on to say that it was still not the time to say it. And it was he c- should have called him a thug, a butcher of war criminal. But it, he shouldn't have used this language that could be misconstrued what by the wishy, public. What a wishy, weasel, Kremlin. idiot that Tom Nichols is. Else. I'm very, I'm getting upset. Now. I'm, mad at this guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, <clears throat> but it just goes to show you that. This is not. First of all, th- it was never charming of Biden to say what's on his mind. It was always jackassery, which is why. It was also Jack Rossery when Trump did it, too, by the way. Okay, that's fine, Alice, okay? Mm -hmm. For the Trump sucks at saying stuff off the cuff thing, we'll say. But like you said, Biden is supposed to be the un-Trump. Right. He's supposed to be better, you know? Trump says stuff off the top of his mind as well. Although Trump's, I would say, is also the key to his success. Well, right, but this is the reason why people like Tom Nichols told us we couldn't vote for Trump. Tom Nichols is an idiot. I don't like him. (laughs) Okay, sorry. So here's my thing. Is that Biden... The speech, the Churchillian speech, mm-hmm. so strong, so strong, so strong speech. The speech that Zelensky hated, by the way, and the Ukrainians think sucks because it's Churchillian, but Churchill committed to the war, right? And Biden has not. So it's it's us going over, patting ourselves in the back, giving ourselves a participation trophy for the war we're not really participating in. Mm-hmm. Um, but this it was carefully crafted. This Churchillian speech. And so what Biden said in what they're calling on the on the Sunday shows is the nine words, the nine magic words that he said. What Biden did by saying those words is say, give a piece of distribute a piece of news content that's much more vital and critical than the all the Churchillian flowery right. stuff. So that's why this was incredible. It was Churchill, 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 Churchill suddenly nuclear Thor, the nine words. <clears throat> that's all that means. I mean, this guy, and also, but so this, let me hear, and this is very important, because I want to talk to you about this. Okay. And I don't want, I'm mad at you for liking Tom Nichols, and you should do, not follow him anymore. He's obviously a dumb, sorry. <laughs> when I first heard this, mm-hmm. I thought, this has ramifications to say something like this, that um, I'll, I'll hit the spot again. Freedom and possibilities. <clears throat> For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. I thought that is a soaring, searing, direct uh, piece of oratory that is really laying a marker, saying, no, this guy is unacceptable on this earth in 2022. And I thought that's going to have all sorts of reverberations, obviously. It's going to be pro Putin, Putin this uh, propaganda, and like we've just been talking about. And of course, it's very tough to negotiate with somebody who you don't have any faith in. And why would they want to? And also, Putin's crazy. <clears throat> so I thought that this is a, <clears throat> a very um, uh, incendiary thing to say, certainly. That said, I also thought that's kind of leadership that is absolutely striking a theme of you have in the in the middle of the action you have <clears throat> um you have stripped putin of his stripes you have downgraded him and that is powerful the spirit of it is powerful if he and so it's like in that way, wow, that's a, that's a, that puts skin in the game, if you say something like that. Right. That put, shows us, that puts us in the NATO's interest at risk. You've made a gamble that the spirit of what you said might start something, might ignite pe- pe- something in people, whether it's in Russia or the re- resistance in Ukraine or other leaders in Europe. That starts something. That is, that gets the ball rolling for something new and different, or at least tries to. And that is, that is leadership. It's ballsy and maybe a little reckless, but sometimes the real big leadery things are. And you can just go back to <clears throat> Reagan, Gorbachev turned hair down these walls. You know, it's an action item. It's big. Um, so that stood out there. And then, of course, 11 minutes later, the White House walks it back. Right. They he delete- didn't really mean <clears throat> to tear down the walls. They deleted it. Not to literally. Tell people what, he meant, what they say he meant. <clears throat> Not only do they walk back what he says, but what they say he meant is absurd 
doesn't make any sense. Right. So what they're saying he meant is that they meant he shouldn't remain in power over Ukraine and his other neighbors in the region. Which is weak in a stretch <clears throat> and obviously is not what he meant. Yeah, it's not what he meant. It's it's nobody what he says meant. that. But for the communication shop or Ron Klain or whoever it is or Jill Biden, whoever it is, for them to override what his actual sentiment is that he got out there. Mm -hmm. is pretty GD big. That is big. And I'm actually pissed off. The president You would have preferred the Biden who the president decided said something. to do regime change in Russia. The president said something that he meant, that he tacked on at the end of a speech. That he meant. It's out there. Putin knows he meant it now. <clears throat> you, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you reel it in. So now if you reeled it in, all you're showing is that you're scared that Putin knows that he meant it. And you're scared that Putin's going to take that seriously. And so now you're going to have to be contrite and say, give some, you've, you've, you've turned a moment of incredible strength, if not overwrought hubris, into a moment of, moment of total weakness in disorganization. So who's running the GD country if this guy can't say off the cuff something that's reasonable? That's reasonable to say that Putin can't, Putin can't remain in power. It is a big and bold thing to say. Mm-hmm. And maybe astonishing, but it's also astonishing to be, you know, have Navy ships and fighters and cannons, you know, blowing the crap out of uh, civilian areas in Ukraine. So for them to do that, the, to undermine him, to chop him at the knees. To me, a poll, an NBC poll came out today, I think, that show Biden's handling of this is is like, uh, is like uh, NBC poll, is like less than 35% approve the way he's handling this. In Ukraine. Now that would be a great. Right, Biden's approval rating falls to lowest. Seven in ten Americans express low confidence in the president's ability to deal with Russian invasion of Ukraine's approval. His approval fell below forty percent. That is precisely why your approval would fall before before forty percent, because Biden went out there, spoke for himself for one second, said <laughs> something that he believes in that is. Not unreasonable. And the White House had to delete his messaging. And they've done it on a few things, or by the way, over there. But they're having to reel him in. You've got, you cannot have, <clears throat> you cannot have a White House, the policy makers, correcting, like an errant dog, the president. Everybody voted for that old calcified <laughs> idiot they did not vote for antony blinken okay right so this is horse bleep i i am i think this is this is a this is a, an effing problem this is a problem because there are a group of people in the white house making the decisions right and they don't involve biden right <laughs> he just goes out and says what he wants i mean it's it's problematic in a lot of ways. I think Putin knows that a lot of people in the United States and probably a bunch of people in Russia don't want him in power, which is why he like kills members of the press and people from opposition parties and whatever, right? Like that's he obviously knows that that's a thing. The, but it was a problem when Lindsey Graham called for there to be a Russian Brutus too, right? Because people in the United States government shouldn't be like calling for the ouster of people in countries unless they're prepared to back it up. And that was the thing with like when Trump spoke off the cuff, uh, you know, he would actually do stuff. Like he actually blasted Soleimani off the face of the earth. Like he did things, you know what I mean? But it makes the United States look even more weak when Biden goes out here and says this stuff. And clearly the United States is not going to back it up with any kind of policy at all. Right. Because doesn't that just signal <laughs> right. to every dictator and bad but, actor but, but in the also, world that we're not going to do anything? But also Lindsey Graham is a senator. Right. You know, he is, does not direct policy of the executive branch. He does not have, or he can say what he wants. I don't think it's very smart. If I were Lindsay, I would probably not want, for reasons we don't have to go into, I would not put myself in a position where uh, you'd want to be embarrassed by the Russians. But, <clears throat> and also, wasn't um, Caesar killed by senators? Yeah, but you senators you were know? a little bit different in <clears throat> ancient Rome than they are today, I would say, in the United States. It was a little bit of a different position, but we don't have to get into that right now. But yeah, I mean, it's just crazy because the 
the thing with the media, like Tom Nichols says the media seized on it, which like obviously because it was newsworthy. But for the most part, like all the opinion people and stuff on the news spend all their time like explaining this away or just ignoring and pretending it didn't happen altogether. Like, oh, the White House clarified it away. It's gone now. We don't have to address that. Like everybody, all the opinion-y people on the news, Jennifer Rubin, Biden makes a speech akin to those of at the Brandenburg Gate by JFK and Reagan in a square with a crowd. His delivery is quite strong. Mika from Morning Joe says, like Reagan, Biden is keeping tyrants guessing. Uh, and then you have uh, Larry Sabato watching <clears throat> Biden Warsaw speech reminds me of JFK's Ich bin ein Berliner and Reagan's Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall. Masterful. Now give Zelensky more of everything. And yeah, but that, Alex Vindman obviously has oh, he's to weigh a, in. in more on this was a historical speech. Oh, sorry. This was an historical speech for POTUS. I don't like the shape of his head. And also, <laughs> like, I mean, doesn't that doesn't that just tell you that the, the that first impeachment was just horse bleep? Like Kennedy's Berlin speech, this is the one Biden will be remembered for. Biden laid down a marker that the U.S. will defend its allies and democracy. I'm proud of my POTUS and his powerful leadership during oh, a climactic pussy. battle first for all, democracy. Yeah, uh, Kennedy. Gave gave his speech and reagan gave his speech about berlin in berlin okay husk was uh one country away among other things well i was also on the other side of the brandenburg gate right well right they were at ground zero alice the, right the east germans could hear them right um what's our guinea fall over there i've been letting them out to hopefully they'll get killed by hawks and unfortunately none of them have <clears throat> all they right they sound lovely no, they're, I'm at war with Argonne Fall. I no longer like them. But now, of course, th this y last year, this my yard was LaGuardia for every hawk in the world to land in. <laughs> this year, I can't get any of them to, to land in here. All right, so um, uh, Michael Goodman ha talked about this a little bit. Goodwin says... Whoever the White House eventually explains itself, it won't be good enough, not by a long shot. This was at least the fourth time on the three-day trip that something Biden had said had to be walked back, cleaned up, clarified, or refuted. No, there will not be food shortages in America, despite what he suggested. No, American troops in Poland are not headed to Ukraine, despite what Biden told them. No, the United States will not use chemical weapons, even if Russia does, despite the Republicans seeming to threaten it, President seeming to threaten it would. And no, we're not pushing for regime change in Russia, says uh, Michael Goodman. So good one. So this has been a, uh, a a tough few days, but <clears throat> but you know they so wanted this to make this, and that's why the Sunday shows we're talking about this. Sunday shows talked about a few things, but this was one of them. Is they so wanted to make this the Churchillian thing, and it really, it really, I, I think it kills Democrats that they have to get put this to have to spend time talking about this, and that's why they're denigrating us, calling oh the nine words, the nine words, the nine words, yeah. It's the most explosive nine words he said during the speech. The nine words. God, they're so Plus, pathetic. Wouldn't it be better? If, I mean, like, I get it. They issued statements. They had, you know, the the ambassador to NATO guy and they had Blinken and everybody say, no, 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 no. That's not what he meant. Never mind. But like, wouldn't it be helpful if they could have Biden say that's not what he meant too? Right. <clears throat> well, but, absolutely. It, like, so, I would like to get, like, just for my own personal comfort, I would like him to say out loud that that's not what he meant and, like, have it on video because it seems to me that otherwise they're just shuffling him back into the closet where they keep him to shut him up and right. going back to the policy that they want to have. And as a matter of fact, if they if they want to if they want to say that it's like Biden being at the Brandenburg Gate and Kennedy, Kennedy et cetera, mm -hmm. well... Except for the Kennedy administration didn't walk back Ich bin ein Berliner. Right. And, and the other people didn't. He didn't literally mean he right. was an actual Berliner. He so was... I, I tweeted something like this on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and John DePietro, who does the John DePietro show I used to work with at RKO, was a good, good and funny guy, says, On this day, December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. Strike that. Thoughts and prayers to the families of the kamikaze pilots who lost their lives in Pearl Harbor. Which I think is, uh, which is absolutely right. Right. It's uh, not. It's like, why? Why not just let them, let it hang out there? And the only people I heard say let it hang out there, like I'm saying now, on the Sunday shows, were um, liberals, progressives. 
Oh, right. Not the crazy ones, but a couple of them. Mm-hmm. The other one said, oh, nine words. A couple of them said, no, I think that he should have, uh, they should have let it stand on its own. As you know what I'm saying, bold, maybe over the top. But hey, I mean, it's. Whatever I mean, Trump was doing seemed to work for Trump okay for four years. So. No, he ruined it. They, they, he's doing worse. Trump's doing worse. <laughs> the parallel universe where this happened, which is just as credible as the real universe. Trump has screwed this up, and he's been very intemperate, and he's been tweeting badly and doing stupid stuff in Russia, Russia. So, mm-hmm. oh. uh, okay. The other thing that they've been saying on the Sunday shows, of course, is um, um, cont- Contagia. Brown Katanji Jackson. Brown Jackson. Katanji Brown Jackson was, um, was of course incredible. And the Republicans are uh, Yimiche Alcindor started to say what the world saw this week was Republicans doing all the messaging on behalf of QAnon, um, and that's what they spent their time doing, and that's what the world witnessed. And like, I, I I'm wondering. John on the chat points out that they did have to walk back. Uh, uh, Kennedy saying that he was a jelly donut because he said Ein Berliner. No, I know he Berliner. screwed it up, but yeah. did they walk it back? They walked, but they said he wasn't a jelly donut. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would also say forgivable considering he's a guy from Brookline, Massachusetts, and, and it's not a. I wouldn't have tried to do the German, but. Do German, uh, yeah. Mm. Did they, people, you know, but it's fine. But um, but um, okay. So that yeah, it was is that Republicans in the Senate Judicial Committee were doing the work of QAnon, which is something that the left loves to say now. I think the the left knows more about QAnon than I know about. I don't even know where to find it or where to. It's basically defunct now. They're not really doing Q isn't doing drops anymore. There's really no more QAnon. Right, but there's they're all into this. That's what they're saying. So if you're on, if you're a and it's a it's a clever way to try to pervert something a, a credible charge into wacky conspiratorial stuff, right? Uh, you know, because if you have a question of about sex offenders, well, it's in sentencing over sex offenders, that's pretty valid. But QAnon didn't like sex offenders either, so it's QAnon. Yeah, exactly. It's like, come on, give me a. Free- so anything that has to do with, and they'll say that stuff about like the Florida don't say gay bill too. Mm-hmm. Like if you call it the anti grooming bill, they'll say like, oh, that's a QAnon idea that like, right? Like anything that has anything to do with like child sexual abuse is now QAnon, right. which tells you where the left is that they want to discredit everything that has anything to do with being tough on sex abuse. Like, yeah, and it's not about it's like, and I do love that they're buying the the billboards to gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like. You find you have the straw man that you've created in your head is not as numerous as you think it is. I'm sorry, or if it exists at all. But um, but I don't mind her ask, them asking her about that. I don't mind them. First of all, they have no leg to stand on from the, what they did with Kavanaugh. It's nothing. Well, right. No leg to stand on whatsoever. And to say that she was poised, etc. She was poised. But you know why? She looked great up there because the Republicans had enough respect. To treat her like they'd treat a white man nominee who is a Democrat, right. and go after him for his record, despite her skin color, they went after her for her rec- for her record. Some of it was showboating, some of it was trying to goad her into a trap. Some of it was uh, legit, some of it was stupid, some of it was inane, some of it was good. Whatever, it was a Senate hearing with a bunch of vain jackasses who do what everything what they do every for you. It right. wasn't accusing her of running a sex ring <laughs> or raping multiple people in front of his kids. It wasn't accusing him of being or her of being a total pervert to to some an underling um, in, in front of his wife and child like they did with Clarence Thomas. Which brings us to the other ironic thing. Is that the other the Sunday shows are also very upset that Ginny Thomas um, texted with people in the Biden administration during January sixth because she was all excited about the maneuver they were going to do to save the republic from the stolen election, which right. was her feeling about the thing. And so now it's these are very this is very tough. He should be recusing himself and anything to do with January sixth whatsoever. Anything to do with January sixth whatsoever. It's like no, it, he he can't help be connected to the government. Mm-hmm. The a husk a hole who we just who just stuck his foot in it over in Poland, you know, spent all of 1992 calling Clarence Thomas to his face, 
a pervert and a sexual harasser who is harassing and, 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 and terrorizing Anita Hill and others. Well, his wife sat next to him as his wife cried as Thomas, you know, a, 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 accused Biden of leading a high a, a, a high tech lynching. Right. So, I mean, what's Thomas allowed to talk about since he's been on the receiving end of attacks from this filthy administration? While he was in the hospital, by the way, right, exactly. they did this nonsense about his wife's texts. And exactly. Stuff. Exactly. Exactly. This is the, this is the, that was the second black man to be in the Supreme Court. And they were happy to just. Destroy him to try to destroy him using bullying tactics and terrorizing him, not unlike Soviet-style tactics. As a matter of fact, destabilize the man from within. That's what they were trying to do, Clarence Thomas. And this is thankfully, Biden was so freaking inept, but was able to speak fast and loud back then that Thomas was able to to um, to dismantle him pretty easily. But still, it was absolutely re ridiculous. And so Ginny Thomas is the other thing that's very important. And they said. They said, and listen to this, Chuck Todd said this and some other people said it. Well, you know, much like um, Loretta Lynch, you know, wisely uh, accused herself when she was found to have had a secret meeting, meeting with uh, Bill Clinton. You know, she recused herself. Clarence Thomas didn't have a secret meeting with anybody. Yeah, his wife yeah, texted. Yeah, his wife is a little nuts, okay? That's the thing. It's not, Clarence didn't do anything. Well, and he it's not like... The whole thing with her texting him is that it wasn't like she was hatching some plot. With, who was she texting? Meadows? Is yes. that right? So it's not like she was hatching some plot with them. She was like ranting in her text messages about stuff. Like this was stolen, da, da, da. We should yes. do this. We should do that. And, she got people buses to come to the Capitol. That exactly. Day. But she, she also condemned but, the, the rioting. She said, this is, look, looks terrible for us. Right. But they... <clears throat> She wasn't, like, in some plan with them to steal the election, right? She was just texting her buddy, Mark Meadows, while all this was going on about stuff. And, you know, and his responses, you can almost feel, like, his eye rolls a little bit because she's a little enthousia over-enthusiastic about the stolen election thing, I think more so than him in the text. And he seems, like, pretty chilled out about right. it like they're not hatching a plot together there's none of this he voluntarily gave all these texts to the committee clarence thomas isn't ruling on it i don't know what they want him to recuse himself from right now there's no january 6th thing in front of the supreme court that i know of right now but there's not the whole thing the whole january 6th panel and or whatever it's called in the in the house is is the house committee that's investigating it is so absurd like there's no there was no plot to do anything with the people overrunning the Capitol. That wasn't part of anybody's plan. Right, yeah, the, yeah, the people overrunning the Capitol, that was different. Yeah, I mean, uh, was Trump trying to find a legal way to, like, get certain electoral votes mm -hmm. switched out for other? Like, yeah, he was trying to find a legal way to do that. He was consulting with lawyers and trying to do that. But that's really a separate issue from the people running into the Capitol, which I think the left conflates a lot. It, it, knowingly, Alice, it's, it's by design. <laughs> so they're like trying to claim that like, you know, I think in their imagination, they think there was like a legitimate coup attempt with like Ginny and Clarence Thomas and Donald Trump. Yeah, like, and, running... the, and the guy with the antlers. <laughs> running, running, yeah. Right. <laughs> running this plan to like get these people into Congress and then like hang them on their tiny, tiny gallows right. now, that they had now, as a as a protest. And the, and, the pro and, the, and the rioters are one thing. That said, Trump was trying to change the outcome of the election. Absolutely. But so also was Al Gore. Right. Of course. So was Hillary Clinton. Of so it was like I mean like. Of course. Yeah, and and because Trump, I believe, believes he won the election. I think so too. And I think that Ginny Thomas believes he won the election. And I think that probably a lot of people 50 do. million Americans at least believes he, maybe even 60 million believes, believe he won the election. And we live in a country where you're allowed to believe that the person who lost the election won the election. You're allowed to. It happened in 2016 and it was fine. Back then you were encouraged to not believe that Trump won the election. Right. And it, it happens more and more now because people can't, uh, people don't leave their echo chambers and they don't understand how people could feel differently than they do on things and so when they, things don't go their way it's like i don't understand i talked to my friends in brooklyn i and i talked to my friends in the upper east side and i talked to my friends in cambridge massachusetts and all of them agree with me i think these these earlier shows are good for sunday i think it's a good idea good <clears throat>
Yeah, we'll try and do it more. And we get a bunch of stuff to hit. Uh, so should okay. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff going on. Should we go? All right. Should we say goodbye to folks and go to wait? Do, what do we do? Does this one do that? Yes. This we is do only that. Patreon. The, everybody, everybody who's watching right now, they're all staying there. Okay. Stopping the recording, starting a new recording, and those shows will go up separately for Patreon and non Patreon. But the people who are not listening live, who will see the other show, will the show will oh. end here, I suppose. Okay, so I'm just going to hit the closing thing, and you're going to talk, and then I'm going to hit the reopening thing. Okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. As you probably noticed, we were talking to people in the chat who were watching live. That's available as part of our Patreon membership. You can find that at patreon.com slash burn barrel if that's something you're interested in joining. We also do a little extra show there every week on Sundays. Um, so if you're watching or listening on Patreon, stay tuned for that. Uh, we also are available always for free at burnbarrelpodcast.com everywhere you like to listen to podcasts. 